Welcome back, family. This is your boy, D. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that this simply means. And I got a hot one for you today, family. There's a question that came out regarding interviews, how to manage multiple project interview question. Again, how to manage multiple projects interview question. What that means is if you're asked a question during an interview, how do you manage multiple projects? Good question. As always, you know I want to give you my framework. First, I like to give you the foundation, and then I'll give you my three principles. So the foundation. The foundation of this question, um, most of the time when I ask this question as an interviewer, uh, I normally want to know how do they, what's their process? Do they have any systems in place? What's their level of, 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 of confidence? Are they planning or are they just fell in the plan? So that is the reason for the actual question to those are that's the, those are the thoughts that are most of the time are going through the interviewer's head of, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about trying to understand if this person can handle the potential stress that may come with managing or excuse me, leading various different projects. So let's get into some of my principles of what I would how I would answer that question if I was on an interview. So the question is asked, hey, um, Edward, how do you handle uh, leading multiple projects at one time? Great question. Thank you for asking me. First of all, I have I would have a um, I have a routine for my project management. So when I actually am, am leading a project, my first thing is um, when I when I get into the office in the morning, I check all my projects and look for all any risk that may potentially be happening um, and any issues that have already occurred. I look at it to see where we're at, see who's responsible, see if there are any changes have been done uh, through that. So that's a collection of all of my risk and issues from the various projects that I'm leading. And I keep this on a separate template on top of I'm already doing the extra work with keeping my risk register in place as well as my issue log. So when I have all of this in place, um, then I basically move from there. As then I start looking at emails. So I start looking at emails, see if there's any new correspondence that's come in that may have had any changes or effect to my projects so I can make sure I can update them accordingly. If there are no changes, then I move on to the next step. But if there are some changes to the projects, I make sure I communicate those changes out um, effectively to the project team as a whole, to whoever, whatever project team that is responsible for that particular project. At that point, then I start creating me a checklist. This checklist is um, aligned with each project, the things that I know that I need to do on top of some of the things I've already did as when I first sat down, meaning I, I told you before, I checked any uh, risk or issues on the projects that I'm leading, and then I went and checked my email. So th these would be tasks that would be on this particular checklist as I'm, as I'm you know, going through and, and looking at everything. Next thing is, is that I will ensure that my project management meetings have a purpose and an agenda. So when we're actually going through the multiple projects that I'm able to be to keep up to know where each project is and make sure I drive conversations to ensure that I'm driving the projects of these multiple projects that I, I am actually leading. Point number two, family transparency. This is key. So when you are very when you're being transparent on um, on your project, when you're managing multiple projects, it, I mean, I'm gonna tell you this, when you have someone that's very transparent with you about how the project is going, it makes the project as a whole run better. I'm, I'm oh man, I wish I could just tell you, but it's been so many projects that you just be like, why you didn't tell me that earlier? We could have fixed it. Why you didn't have to hide? It. Like we could have fixed that collectively as, 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 as a team. And so that's why it's important. Matter of fact, it's imperative that you create a sense of making sure the team feels comfortable to, about being honest about where the project currently is and where the project is going when they're giving these project status updates. Um, because by doing so, you when you create transparency, I know people don't know this, but 
It's really so true. You create a sense of trust, not a sense. You create trust because they're like, well, dang, at least he's up front and being honest with me. Yeah, I mean, this is what it is. I don't have any control over that. Only control I have is, is encouraging you. Only control I have is inspiring you to actually go in and do what's required for us to move this project along. So family, being able to be transparent about where the project is at and things that are happening and that are not going the way they're supposed to, that resources are dropping or the budget is getting you know tighter and tighter. So it's very important that you are very transparent when you're communicating your project from the top all the way to the bottom. My last and final thing of when I'm discussing this this uh, point of when I'm asked the question of how I man, um, manage multiple projects, I, I, I go to my, my foundation again, commitment. I'm committed to each one of these projects and because I'm committed, I'm going to, number one, I'm going to constantly, you know, set my team up for success. What do you mean by that, ED? Well, when I'm setting my, if I know that John owes me a task on Friday, on Tuesday, maybe even on Monday, okay, let's be honest, knowing me, on Monday, I'm going to, I'm going to start sending John emails. Monday, hey, John, just FYI, this item is due Tuesday. Hey, John, FYI. Wednesday. Hey, John, FYI. And again, it depends on how, you know, it depends on the actual task. I mean, if it's crucial, I may do every day, but if it's not, I may do every other day, you know, depending on what the due date is. So let's say again, let's say the due date is Friday. I may communicate on Monday. I may, I'll communicate on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I'll, instead of sending an email, I'll send a message through whatever, one of the chat channels, whether it's a Slack channel, whether it's Teams, um, Skype, whatever, you name it. Uh, but I will make sure I send a chat because a lot of times I also know, and I'll teach you guys that too trick, but I've noticed people are more responsive in chat than they are in emails. I don't know if it's because it's so instant or what, but we're, I'm going to unpack that and look at that. So again, family, what I would do is make sure that I'm being committed because a lot of times, you know, when when you are managing multiple projects, that means there are multiple teams and those teams may be working on multiple different projects. So you can assume that they are going to be aware and know what is is, is be required because they may misplace what your task is that is due with another project. So always make sure that I'm constantly sending reminders, sending follow ups. Um, if, if they're not responding, escalating and doing all the all the things that will make sure that I've, I've done exhausted every possibility to ensure we can have the success that's required to be successful in this project. Hope you enjoyed today's content. I'm your boy D. Until next time.